So with all of that, we came up with uh, the audit sales presentation system. Um, I kind of came up with the idea here. I built it as a prototype. I started using it in Excel. Um, I started to have some good results. I started to sell a lot of cloud. OS33 came to me and said, hey, how are you doing all this? Um, I showed them the, uh, the prototype of my system. Uh, they kind of encouraged me to take it to the next step. And then I put together a team uh, to build this. Um, Ralph Rivera, uh, he's not on the call this time, but um, he's kind of the genius that brought this to life. Uh, many times he'll do the presentation and the demo of the system, uh, but today actually I'm going to do it for you. So let's jump out of the presentation here and let's go to the actual system. So the system lives at uh, www.auditforit.com. Once you're logged into the system, which I am already, uh, you get dropped into a dashboard that has some statistics and some information that is presented to you. Um, what I'd like to do is uh, point out a few different areas of the system and then kind of drill in a little bit on how you can conduct and audit and you can get started pretty quickly. So first off, um, once you sign up and uh, you log in for the first time, you'll be brought into system management. Uh, three things you need to pay attention here. One, you got to upload your company logo if you want it to appear on the reports. We, um, we've got some pretty specific requirements in terms of the size and the resolution and that's because we want your report to look awesome. We don't want to break the integrity of the report with a low res graphic. So, if you have any trouble trying to upload your logo like I did the first time, <laughs> feel free to open up a ticket with us. I'll show you how you can go into support and uh, you can send the ticket over. We would be happy to resize your logo, send it back to you, and you can upload it. Right. So that is step number one. Number two is you have to confirm your company name. Um, it's going to appear on all of your reports and if you spell it wrong or you, you know you put something incorrect in you as an end user can't change it. Um, we can which means you'd have to send us a ticket. So um, you know for accuracy try to make sure that you confirm and spell everything correctly the first time. And then the last thing you would want to do in here is uh, administer any of your auditors. Auditors are the people within your company who have the ability to create audits, right? So um, depending on your level of subscribership, you either have one, three, or five auditors available to you within your organization. You can create new ones, um, you can edit the existing ones, change the avatars, and you know, change passwords, do all the usual stuff of, um, you know, it's associated with users. <clears throat> and that's it. That's basically your entire setup. Um, there's not much else that you need to do to get started. I'm going to highlight a few different areas here. The first one is going to be templates. So I'm going to move my way up to the top left here. And templates are basically a collection of audit items, right? So think of this as your opportunity to put together a grouping of things that you might audit. So um, remember we talked about your IT personality? Well, I might audit 27 things on a regular basis because, you know, it's things that I think are important or the things that I have solutions to that I could sell. Um, we are unlikely to have the same exact 27 things. So you should be able to put together some templates that work for you, right? Uh, as a soup starter, we give you some starter templates over here on the right-hand side. You'll see you have cloud services with and without telecom. Um, and then we have two for managed services. Um, these are just starter templates. You can use them. Or if you go to options and clone, we can come over here and we can actually create some new ones. Uh, I'm going to jump into one. I would like to uh, just show you, you know, how it's set up and what it includes. So let's go to the TRTG cloud services with telecom, and I'm going to go to view edit. And <clears throat> once we do that, it's going to bring you into a template. So remember, we talked about our 27 point audit. So let's uh, let's explain a little bit of what that looks like. So first off, um, there's four quadrants here: infrastructure, security, and managed support and services. Those are the three quadrants that relate back to IT, and those are the ones that draw that uh, drive all of our scoring for the audit score. The fourth quadrant, which is optional and stands alone, it doesn't affect the score, um, is telecommunications. You can choose to disable this if you want, so you can have a template where it's already disabled, or you can do it at the time that you actually decide to do the audit. In addition, you'll notice that we have a grouping, right? So there's nine different audit items that you could pick under each category. Nine times three is 27. There's your 27 point audit. If you click edit within each of these quadrants, you now have the ability to pick which things you would like to audit. You could put them in whatever order that you'd like to present them in. 
and you could weight them. All right, so everything is drag and drop here. <clears throat> so you might decide, hey, I want to have servers appear on the top left. I don't care about switching. I don't sell switches, so you can drag it out. Maybe you do cabling. Maybe that's a big, um, you know, vertical for you. So you take cabling and you place that anywhere you'd like. So you could reorder this. You can put in, um, you do whatever way you wanted to. You can pick and choose from this list. Um, one of the questions that we get fairly often is, hey, where did this list come from? So I could tell you that the initial list was created by myself, just based upon my experience in the industry and having done this for a long time. The next um, uh, revision came from our beta users. So this was released into beta, and uh, we got some feedback from people on different things that they would like to see. And then it's been revised several other times. Now as we go forward, we've solicited feedback from our partners who have, who have made suggestions about other things that should appear in here. You'll also notice that um, some of these have a little uh, infographic icon next to those, right? Um, this denotes that there is an infographic available for that particular item. Uh, our goal is to have an infographic for every single audit item within the system, and we've been working pretty diligently at doing that, and we've been releasing one new infographic about every other week. So um, soon we'll have a complete set that goes along with everything. But in this case, you can see we've got you know a couple that are available to us. Um, the other thing you'll notice here, and it's actually the last important item, is the weighting, right? And you'll notice that some of it's lighter and some of it's darker. So it kind of looks like a heat map. What we recommend that you do is you set everything to weight three, right? So that's in the middle. And then you ask yourself, hey, what's a little more important? What's a little bit less important? And you could skew it left or right that way. Um, you don't have to worry about being too perfect because you could adjust this when it comes time to do the actual audit. But all it means is that anything that's a five is counted a little more heavily towards the audit score than something that's a one, right? And you can see as you change it, if we go cabling, we had a one, we change it to a five, we see it's dark, and this gets a little bit lighter. So it's good because it lets you kind of see visually what's a little bit like heavier in terms of our, our uh, weighted importance. <clears throat> so when you get done setting up the template, you save it, and you simply do this for each of the different sections, right? So you're going to do this for security, you're going to do it for managed support and services, and if you want to show telecom, you would do it for that. If you want to disable telecom, simply click the disable button, and that'll gray this quadrant out, okay? When you're done, um, I recommend that you give this a descriptive name, so you would click edit template details, call it something that's descriptive, because you're likely going to be basing um, your audits off of this template. And so, you, you know, if you have a few in the list, you're going to want to at least know what they are. So give that a descriptive name, and then when you're done, you would save this. Um, in the end, you'll end up with several different templates, like I have right here, and you always have your starter templates to go back to. Um, this is something that, um, you know, over time you'll probably develop and uh, get a little bit better at this. Um, the more work you put into this, the easier it will be to do the audits later on down the line. Okay? The next area that I would like to, uh, to show you is auditees. So we've introduced some kind of interesting uh, language here. An auditee is simply a client or a prospect that you run audits on. So right now, when you create a new auditee, um, you have to type the information into the system. Uh, we're working on, for this quarter, integration with um, the three main PSA tools, uh, ConnectWise, Autotask, and TigerPaw. Uh, you'll be able to, at that point, pull the data into those systems and then be able to take it and pass information back over to the PSA tool. But for right now, you're going to freeform type the information in. Um, we could pick somebody here, and you see we have a whole bunch of tests here, so we'll just jump in here and, uh, and grab one. If we choose Edit Audity, we could come in here and uh, edit their information, and pick whether they are a client or a prospect, and then save it. As soon as we save it, it automatically creates what's called an audit trail, right? So um, I'm going to click on the audit trail, and what this is going to show us is that we have... Um, uh, the initial uh, audit. When it's when we first create the auditee, this is blank and you don't see anything else here. And what you're required to do is to go in under Actions and select Edit. So our baseline audit is always the first one that we'll do. And then we have some information up here that we are going to edit. So first thing we do is give this a descriptive uh, name. In this case, baseline plan for XYZ company is fine with me. We 
then we put in um, some information. Um, one thing that we are going to be releasing very soon is a fact finder that kind of goes along here and it kind of reminds you of information uh, to gather. And one of the things we recommend that you get is what your prospect is currently spending on a monthly basis. Sometimes, in fact, almost every time, it's hard to get them to commit to an actual specific dollar amount, but we can usually get them to agree to a range. So in this case, if we say, hey, you know what, they say we're spending somewhere between $1,000 to $1,200 per month, let's put that in as a range. And then um, if you're auditing telecom like we are here, you can usually get the phone bill and you can usually get this down to a dollar amount. In this case, we'll say they're spending $750 per month. Save this. This information gets used later in the system. Now, um, let's not worry about the audit score just yet. Let's take a look at these quadrants, okay? This time around, what we would do is we would go into the system and we would click summary statements. Now, this looks almost exactly like the template. In fact, it's based off of the template. Um, but now we have the ability to create summary statements. <clears throat> so let's take one step back real quick. I want to remind you, remember I talked about thinking like a doctor? and boiling it down. So this is where you put on your doctor's coat, all right? You've gathered the data whatever way you do it today, right? There's no magic way to get that, right? In fact, you know, myself as an MSP, I do a variety of things. I use a couple different tools uh, to gather technical data. I follow a fact finder. I walk around. We take pictures. <clears throat> we interview some of the staff, um, and we capture all that information, right? Um, from there, I come back and we analyze that. We, meaning our, you know, Two River Tech or the MSP, we are professionals. We are the ones who are best qualified to look at that raw data and to boil it down into a summary statement. We should not be giving the prospect or client the raw data. It's not their job to interpret that. It's our job. So here's where we're forcing you to do that. So um, what you would do is click on Edit Summary Statement for each one of these areas, and you have a couple ways that your data is going to get in there. All right. So number one, you can either pick from the list, right? And we always have three stock answers: satisfactory, needs improvement, and requires immediate attention. Right? Everybody understands green, red, and yellow, and that's the the you know the stoplight nomenclature that will follow here throughout the entire system. We also give you some soup starter answers. Um, I'll show you later on in the system where you can actually go in and manage these, but suffice to say, you know, there's some stock answers in here that you might be able to pick from. Or, and what I recommend that you do, is you put in a custom summary statement, right? So you've analyzed all the information that you've pulled regarding the server or servers and the environment. Type something in here. So you type, you know, in this box right here, and then you pick the color that is associated with it. So we're either red, yellow, or green. And then you can decide, do I want to show this in a future pick list or not, right? So if you decide, no, I don't want to show it in a future pick list, this is like a one-off answer, that's fine. But if it's something that you find yourself continuing to use, especially when you're doing this for the proposed plan, then you might want to add it to the pick list and make it easier on yourself to do future audits. In this case, we're just going to pick one of the stock answers. So you're going to do this for each one of the audit items that you had set up inside of the template. Now, um, remember I said you don't have to worry about being too perfect, and that's because you can decide later on while you're doing the audit, you know what, instead of workstations being a three, I want to make it a four. Good, and you can change it. And you'll see that the category score is going to change, right? If we make redundancy a one, you'll see that uh, that number will probably start to change as I make other changes within the system. Let's see if we can kind of make that. And now it's a four. Um, if we switch this back to a one. You know, now it's a five. So um, this, the weighting will drive the actual scoring for the particular category. We also can drag this stuff around. So if you wanted to see redundancy in the middle, just put it over there. When you're done, you hit save. So although we base the audit off of a template, it doesn't mean that we're uh, we're, we're um, uh, stuck with what we set up in the beginning. You could always call an audible and change that. You're now going to do it for security and you're going to do it for managed support and services. All right. <clears throat> if we come into here in summary statements, um, you know, we can do telecom as well. And we could pick some things out of, um, out of here. We'll come in here and we'll just say, hey, this is satisfactory, so you can see that we're able to save some things. And we can save the category score. And then when we're done, what it does is it builds us a, an audit score. 
So remember we talked about that number one, it had to be qualitative, so that's where the colors come in. It had to be quantitative, right? So we have to be able to create a, an overall audit score. If we're auditing these 27 things, we should be able to score it somehow. And in our case, we're scoring between a zero to 100. So, you know, just some quick information, background on the scoring. If everything was green, it would be a 100. If everything was red, it would be a zero. And if everything was yellow, it would be a 50, right? Now, as we start to come into different colors and mixing them and weighting them, that's what's going to alter this score. So suffice to say, we do have a pretty good knowledge base article that goes into like the complicated math behind this. You can read it and you'll understand it. Um, but you're basically presenting a, a score back to the prospect. Now, the reason why this is helpful is because <clears throat> excuse me, we can relate this back to their IT monthly expense. So you have to follow me uh, along here because we're introducing a new concept called effective IT monthly expense. And this is something that I came up with because I needed to be able to level the playing field when I was coming in and I wanted to present my solution, right? So far too often, you know, maybe I come into a prospect's environment, they, they score 12 and they're spending $1,000 a month, but I show up and say, hey, I have a solution, it's, it's $2,500 a month. And then they say, oh, I don't want to spend another $1,500. And, you know, a lot of times they never understood what the problems were and they just, and I don't get the business. Well, my contention was, hey, if you're spending a thousand bucks a month and you got a 12, on a straight line to get to a 100, you'd have to spend $8,300. Or if 1,200, right, you'd have to spend 10,000. I mean, that's crazy. So now you're showing them there's a real level of inefficiency here. Let me, let me flip this around for you. Sometimes I'll say this to the prospect if maybe they're, they're not following this. I say, hey, let's use simple math. Let's pretend I did an audit and you scored a 50 and you told me you're spending 1000 bucks a month. My argument is that's like spending $2,000 a month and just getting half of what you need. Let me take it a step further. If I said to you, hey, my solution is $2,000 a month, but good news, I'm only going to charge you $1,000 a month. Bad news, I'm only going to give you half the solution. Would you buy it? And they'd say, well, no, absolutely not. I say, so in this case, you're spending a thousand dollars a month, and you're only getting twelve percent of what you need. So this is not really the best plan. And before you know it, as you know, you're explaining this, of course, off of the audit report, which we'll get to. They start to realize, wow, we've got some issues here, and I haven't even talked about my solution yet, right? I'm just, I'm just showing them where they are today, and you're doing it by basically bottom lining these 27 audit item areas, right? You're analyzing your own data that you've gathered and then you're presented to them in a different way, right? Stop thinking like a technician, start thinking like a doctor. Um, so now, let's go back to our audit trail. We've done our baseline audit. Now what we have the ability to do is to come under actions and we could say, hey, I want to clone this as a proposed plan. So what this allows us to do is to come in here and create multiple copies that, of things that we can name. We can say, hey, one of these plans is cloud, one of these plans is managed services. And what we would then do is we'd go in and we'd edit that plan so that way you can show them what it might look like after you got done fixing the environment. So, you know, we come in here and we would edit the plan details. In this case, maybe we say our solution is $2,400 a month and our telecom solution is $350 a month. We'd save that. Um, I'm actually going to give it a unique name though here, so let's jump in here. Oops, just jump in here. And I'm going to say um, OS33 uh, cloud plan. And the reason why I want to do that is I want there to be a distinction. Actually, we'll do this two river cloud powered by OS33. Let's do it that way. And we'll save that. It still shows as incomplete, and that's because I think there's one area down here. Yeah, we need to just fill in this one blank. So let's go take care of that. Let's drag uh, business continuity down there. Let's give it an answer. And we'll hit save. And now we show that they now have an 89, right? So in this case, you know, same type of thing. We're taking the IT monthly expense, we're dividing it by the audit score as a percentage, and we're coming up with an effective IT monthly expense. Why is there a discrepancy? Well, we still have some red and yellow in here, right? Which means there's still some things that need to be remediated. Um, you know, remote accessibility, things like email encryption, well, those aren't free, mobile device management. So suffice to say, your solution's 2400, but you, they would have to spend a little bit more <clears throat> to remediate some of these other areas. All right. So now, once that's done, 
we see that and we have a score. These other ones are incomplete because we simply haven't finished those, but that's fine. You also have the ability to come in here and if we clone, we can clone it as a quarterly business plan. And what this will do is create QBRs, right? So now we have a system that allows you to take the presentation that you've done as a baseline to a prospect, show them, hey, this is what we propose, and then once they become a client, now you can track all this stuff going forward in quarterly business reviews, right? So remember our requirement that we had to be able to use this for uh, clients and QBRs to upsell and cross-sell? Well, now you have the ability to do that. But let's get to uh, kind of the meat of it. Like, we want to see what this report looks like. Because for me, remember we talked about, like, hey, what's this 27-point audit? I don't really have anything that's all that good that I could show. So what I can do here quite simply is um, select print report and now I'm presented with a bunch of different options right so I selected my baseline plan <clears throat> I could say hey I only want to print the baseline I don't want to compare it to anything um, I usually don't do that sometimes I'll do that for the first QBR but usually I want to be comparing in this case I'm gonna say hey I want I want this to be the first base audit and I'm gonna compare it to the second one below so I'm going to compare it to this one, right? It was the remember I changed the name to RiverCloud powered by OS33, and I want all the pages, right? Now you know you may decide, hey, I don't want infographics or whatever in, in future revisions, but I want that. And let me show you how quickly this generates a report. I simply click generate, boom, and here's this report. And I think this report looks pretty awesome. Uh, a couple things about it: it's white label, doesn't say audit anywhere on it. So you put your graph, you know, I'm sorry, you put your logo in here. It's presented on the cover page, prepared for your company, is listed, so you own it. Um, you can be proud to present this. And let's step our way through this, right? First page, hey, what is audit? Um, well, we talk about it. And remember we said, you know, we want the ability to show them uh, or to tell them what we're going to tell them, right? We want it to stand alone. We want it to be simple. Well, here you go. One simple page tells them exactly what this report contains, what the audit score is, and kind of how to read it, right? Um, at the bottom, you'll notice that there is a timeline, but no number pages, or no page numbers. And the reason why we did that was we wanted it to be able to be, uh, you can remove stuff. So if you don't like a certain page, just take it out. There's no page numbers, it won't fracture the integrity of the report. Next thing is just a cover sheet, right? So the first plan is always called a base plan. That's when we're doing a comparison. And then the plan type in this case was a baseline plan, and this was the description. So that information that we put into the system flows down onto the report nice. And then we get to this, and this is really, when you first use the system, this is where I think you're going to be um, impressed by the reaction that you're going to get from your prospects and or clients, okay? This is the summary impact page. And when I started to use this, um, before I would even really open my mouth, prospects or clients would lean forward and they'd look up at me, the prospect would say, wow, there's a lot of red and yellow here. And, you know, I, I, I before I can say anything else, they'd go, and we only scored a 12. Wow, this is pretty bad. So they knew right away. And I, I can't tell you, it used to take me, you know, hours in meetings to try to, you know, scare the prospect, explain to them all the issues that we found. Here, I get to deliver that in like a matter of seconds, all right? Now they're, they're I've got their full attention. And so, you know, once they're, kind of done, you know, uh, exclaiming uh, what, what they've seen here, I, I kind of segue over and say, okay, look, let me remind you real quick what we did. We did a 27-point audit across these three, you know, different areas of IT, and we also, uh, in this case, optionally uh, um, audited your telecommunications. Um, what this is is a visual representation of what we found, and yeah, just like you surmised, you know, red isn't really that great. Um, obviously, the goal here is to get to green. Um, in addition, what we did was we converted this information into a score. So from a 0 to a 100, you actually scored a 12 in your overall audit score. And uh, that's not real good. Um, let's talk real quick about the financials there. So you told me that you're spending $1,000 to $1,200 per month. Based on an audit score of a 12 on a straight line spend, that's like spending somewhere between $8,300 and $10,000 a month. You know, that's pretty inefficient. Um, that's usually when I spend a few minutes and we talk about, you know, what that effective uh, monthly IT expense is. You know, we just went over that, so I'm not going to go over it again, but that's kind of where that discussion gets started. So now, this summary impact page, the reason we call it, I call it an impact page because it has a big impact on your prospect. Right away, they know that they're not in good shape and they know they're spending a lot more um, than what they actually think that they get, they're getting. 
Next thing we do is we go through the details, right? So now we have the ability to drill in. So you'll see in the right-hand side we have a thumbnail. It <clears throat> shows them exactly where they're at. And on the right hand, on the left hand side, sorry, um, we're basically showing them, um, you know, what the details are. But we're not giving them a report with 55 pages of all the detail of all the stuff that we, you know, gathered from Active Directory. No, instead, what we're doing is we're explaining that we've boiled it all down. If they really want to see it, you can give that to them. Probably, you know, have it all piled up somewhere. Or you can put it in a binder. But in this case, we, I work from here. And I work from, from audit item to audit item. I talk about the servers. Now, of course, you know, I'm going to say a little bit more than the 150 characters that might be here, but this helps keep me focused, right? And I can talk about, hey, you know, this score was particularly bad, you know, or this section, you got a five. And then we talk about security. And then we talk about managed support and services. And then we talk about telecom. And then we move on to infographics. And, uh, you know, one of the things I'll mention usually, I'll say, hey, you know, don't worry about taking notes if you don't, you know, you're probably not going to remember some of this technical information that I've told you. But anything that has a red and a yellow, we're going to have an associated infographic print. So if it's green, it won't create the infographic. If it's red or yellow, here we are. And remember, a picture's worth a thousand words. Well, here is the professional set of infographics that we've developed. Um, give you the anatomy of an infographic really quickly. Um, on the left hand side is a little bit of technical information about whatever the concept is. We know we're not trying to give them a PhD, but we want them to understand what it is. Um, in most cases we throw some statistics in to just kind of bolster why this is important. On the right hand side, we always tell them why it's important, right? We want them to understand, even if they choose not to look at the techie stuff, why would I even care about backup and disaster recovery? Well here I'm going to tell you why. Um, this shows them what they scored in that particular uh, area, so we remind them that it was either yellow, or in this case it was a red, and it shows them the relative position on the actual uh, preceding pages. And everything is framed between cloud and endpoints. You'll see, um, you know, here, here are cloud, endpoints. So we try to keep it. Those are kind of the bookends of the industry, right? So um, we have one of our partners. He's a graphic artist. He develops these uh, with our input. They all are from the same series. What's nice is it doesn't look like you scoured the internet, pulled you know infographics from ten different vendors, and just stitched something together. This looks professional. Now you don't have to draw pictures anymore. So we go through the different infographics. I usually don't read through them. I tell them that they're there for reference, and people love this. I mean, you, you'll see the prospect. Oh, this is great. Yeah, I'll read this later, and you know it really resonates with them. And then we get to the comparison plan, right? So that's the second plan that we're comparing. Plan type was a proposed plan, in this case, Two River Cloud powered by OS 33. Now we do the same thing. Hey, I've taken the liberty of putting together a proposal for you. Based on the information I've gathered, I went back and you know we, we created a custom solution. Create a proposal, and if we were to uh, run an audit after you started working with us and we completed uh, the project, this is what it would look like now. And you would have scored an 89, right? And then it's funny, usually what they'll say is, what's this red box? <laughs> and it, you know you have them at that point because now they understand what's going on here. And you can say, oh, I'm glad you asked. And now when you go into the details, you're able to show them, well, that red box was the workstations. You know, they, you know, you decided you didn't want to replace those right now, but we're not going to overlook it, right? It's still an area of concern, so that's going to draw down on your, uh, on your audit score. Um, we also talk about the financial summary here we say hey our solution is twenty four hundred dollars per month you're effectively spending about twenty six ninety seven because we still have some things that we'd have to fix uh, but your score is a lot higher and then we step through the details right and then we get to more infographics of so things are still deficient we still want to show them here and then we have our comparative analysis so remember we talked about we wanted a way to easily show you know the difference between uh, before and after. So in this case, you know, we say, hey, this is our base plan. You scored a 12. You're spending 12,000 uh, to 1,200 bucks a month, which is like spending eight to 10 grand. <clears throat> in our uh, solution, our proposed cloud plan, it's going to get you to an 89 right out of the gate. It's $2,400 a month, effectively spending 2697 That's a lot better than spending eight to 10 grand to get to a 100. You know, we're basically saying you could spend 26 or 2700 In our case, it's hard dollars of 2400 so now we've shown them, and what this does, it levels the playing field because before you're going to go in there, they're spending a thousand a month, you're going to try to get them to spend extra fourteen hundred a month for your solution, and they don't know why they would do that. What's the value? Now you've explained it. You could spend a thousand a month, but look what you're getting. 
for 2400 a month, this is what you're getting, and this is what you really need. And you know, if you don't know why you need it, well, go look at the infographic, and I'll explain it to you. And that is what the audit report brings to you. So um, we use this you know, report certainly for prospects. Um, our, our results have, have been great. We're getting really awesome uh, testimonials and feedback from, from partners now, basically uh, echoing the things that I've already found by using it myself. Um, <clears throat> we also use it um, to do quarterly business reviews. So if we go back to you know, an audit trail, <clears throat> we'll go back to that XYZ company. You know, we have the ability to clone this, and then um, you know, maybe they didn't buy your mobile device management solution, and you decided, hey, you know, I want to be able to uh, upsell that. Well, every quarter it's going to show as a red or a yellow, and then you know, when you sit down with the prospect, instead of sitting down and just reviewing tickets and stuff like that, show them the audit report. So, hey, you know, you had a uh, you know an 89 uh, last quarter, or this quarter you have a 91, or this quarter actually went down. Oh, why did it go down? Well. You know your firewall is getting old. You know, you know now uh, Sonicwall came out with a new series. We should really consider upgrading for a variety of reasons. If they don't understand what um, what the uh, what an internet security appliance is, we would have a um, we would have a uh, inter a uh, infographic to uh, explain that to you. So that's basically um, how the system works. A couple other quick areas to note: summary statements. You can go in here. You can actually edit these directly. Um, if we go into if we go into a section here, um, backup disaster recovery, what we can see is that we have a couple of um, stock answers here. We know what those are. In addition, we have some summary statements. Those summary statements um, are the ones that we have predefined, and we can turn these on and off if we wanted to. If you don't want to see them in the list, turn them off. And you can also go in here and you can update the uh, um, custom summary statements. So you can put some in here and you can manage these ahead of time if you'd like. You also have the ability to um, uh, go in here into uh, the help screen, and you can change. Um, you can submit a ticket for uh, the system. We have training and demos. We have frequently asked questions. There's some documentation in here. So this is the area that you would go if you know, want to submit your logo or if you have an issue with the system. <clears throat>